UiPath path has got two design experiences one is the classic and the other is the modern design experience as an rpa developer we should know both the experiences how to use what in this playlist we are covering the classic versus the modern design in a step-by-step -step manner where we are focusing more on the modern design in the previous videos of the playlist we have covered already all of these topics in case you are absolutely new to modern design and you want to get started you can refer to the playlist and get started today in this video we are going to discuss about the fine tuning of the descriptors now before directly jumping into the fine tuning of the descriptors first we need to understand why it is required to fine tune the descriptors right as in the previous video we have already discussed that as a descriptor is a combination of the target and the anchor which uipath modern design automatically generates for us however sometime as per our requirement the generated descriptor is not able to identify the element on the screen that is the time as a UiPath developer we should know that how I can fine tune the descriptors there are multiple different ways depending on the situation that you would like to update the descriptor and make the unreliable descriptor more reliable while the manual editing of the descriptors is not generally recommended so there are other ways like putting the variables into the descriptors using the wildcards using some of the additional activities in UiPath so all of them you can work together to work towards the fine tuning of the descriptors and this is what we are going to see in today's video okay so the first use case for us would be let's say I have multiple notepads which are open in my screen so as you can see i have two notepad application one is this and the other is this right and let's say i have one more notepad application as of now i'm working with notepad but you can think it as uh, multiple instances of the same application okay so to better segregate let me do one thing i'll just go here and i'll save the first notepad in my desktop and i'll say that this is my abc and I'll save this okay so this is my first notepad which is ABC notepad I'll go to the second notepad and here I'll just go and I'll save it to let's say XYZ okay so I have ABC XYZ and then I have a third notepad I'll just go save it as and I'll say that PQR okay anything I'm just renaming them so I have three notepad applications which are available in front of me and I have to click on the notepad right so how you will do I'll go to the activities you will use an activity which is called use application slash browser indicate the application to automate and you will point it to any one of the notepad okay so now if you see here when I dragged and dropped the use application slash notepad it is saying that I am using this one which is the notepad.exe okay now here if I just go and I try to use a click activity I'll drag and drop it here and I'll point it to the file button okay I can say confirm right very simple automation I'll go here and I'll say run the file right so I have created a simple automation where I have three different versions or I would say three different instances of notepad and I am instructing the notepad to click on the ABC and which it clicked but now let's say I go here and I close this ABC dot notepad now still I have the XYZ and I have the PQR so I can go here and I can say run the file right ideally now what is happening I don't have that ABC notepad here but you would notice that the robot still went and clicked on the other notepad file button which is PQR right ideally the robot should have considered the name of the file which it didn't consider right so the first thing which I want to teach you guys is how you can tell an application to consider the file name right so for that all you have to do is when you are creating this application 
you would see here it has something which is called match the exact title abc hyphen notepad which is unchecked by default right this we have already discussed but now it's time for the practical implementation i go here and i click on this button which i say match the exact title right now when i click on this button where i say match the exact title and i'll say control plus s okay now you would see here in my notepad i have xyz and i have pqr right i do not have the abc now if i go here and i say run the file what should happen the robot should now not click on the pqr or the xyz rather it should find for the abc and it should click on that one right now if you notice here the notepad was not open so the uipath modern design activity tried to open the notepad as well because it was not open right open and the close property since we haven't configured the open and close property so it has opened right so as we have already discussed in the previous session you can just edit the properties and tweak this as per your requirement right so now what is happening so the robot open a notepad and Ideally, the expectation was that it should be ABC notepad. It got broke and you have an exception, which is the UI automation exception, right? Now, first thing first, let me just go here and I'll go to the property and let's try to set this one, right? So open, I can say never, right? So now what would happen in the options open when I say it no never, now it will never open the notepad. Okay. Now this was one scenario where the application was not found okay now if you go here and analyze the properties you would yourself realize that why it actually didn't work so if you go to this one which is the unified application target you would have this one which is called the selector if i go and expand this selector you would see here this is the selector right windows app notepad and the title it has chosen was abc hyphen notepad right abc hyphen notepad was not here that's why it broke right however let's say i have a requirement that where the user is going to provide me the name of the notepad and that name we have to provide to this selector so for that let me just go here and i'll take an assign activity right now we have to decide right which one should i click should i click on abc pqr xyz so i'll go here and i'll take an assign activity okay I'll create a new variable this just uh, treat it as an input variable where you are getting this input name from the user right so what is the input name so my input name is let's say ABC so now see this carefully now this input name would be from the user it can be from an application it can from from a database subject of the email anywhere right it is in a variable now you want to use this into the use application slash browser and you want to pass to that specific application or in other words you want to pass this to the selector so that's where you can introduce variables into the selectors right how do you do it in modern it's absolutely simple you just go to that one use application slash browser go to the properties in the selector this this was the selector right i can expand this I maximize this a little bit so all of us can see so now this abc is something which i am not sure this is the value which will be coming from the user so i'll just select that right click on it and i say use a variable and now instead of this i want to pass the str input do you want to have a default value i can leave it to blank and i say confirm and i say okay right so what i have just done is i have introduced a variable into the selector of the notepad now if you see here i have xyz i have pqr right now let's say i want to run it only for pqr save go here run the file okay now what would happen it will only and only work for the pqr see okay so now even if i open multiple instances of the same application right i have one two three if it is not there it's not there right it is definitely going to fail but if you have multiple instances like pqr xyz and all what was happening the robot was by default picking the first one which is on the top 
by introducing the variables into the selectors you can actually customize the behavior let's say now instead of pqr i want to point it to xyz right so i go here save this and say run the file now what would happen we are instructing ui part to click on the notepad whose input should match the subject and the input is xyz so as you can see we have three it went and click on the xyz in case you pass something else the robot is going to say that hey i'm not able to find this selector right so that is how you customize the descriptors now editing of the descriptor can be also done at the design time as well and it can be done for the anchors as well right so take an example let me go here and i'll take a click activity i'll drag and drop it here and let me try to point it to anywhere let's say in this edit button okay now when this automation is running you would see here you get this one right so window selector and you get the anchors as well right so i can just point it as anchor so you have the anchor and you have this one right so you can customize or include the variables directly when you are editing here let's say instead of this i want to use a variable just right click on it and you can say use a variable right so it's not like that you have to run the automation save it and then do it at the design time only you can just go and introduce the variables as well okay and most of you would have already guessed it but i just wanted to add same like you can add variables you guys can also use the wildcards right so we have two wildcards in ui path one is the question mark and one is the star right so in case i believe that this menu bar can have some additional numbers with it right let's say it can be menu bar one menu bar two menu bar three but i'm not sure what would be that number right i can put a star mark which would replace zero or one character or i can simply put a question mark saying that only one character is allowed right so we have already explained this uh, star and the question already in the classic design so not spending much time here but the idea is descriptors in ui path can be edited by introducing the variables or you can also introduce the wildcards as well okay one another thing which you should remember while editing the descriptor is that at any point of time in case you feel that you need more additional attributes you always has an option to open the selector into this one which is the ui explorer okay and that will open this complete use you ui explorer for you where you can add remove the parameters reindicate get the complete details and you can do a lot of stuffs right so all these options are available for you while you are editing the descriptors and the same you can also do for the anchors as well right so we can introduce the wildcards we can introduce the variables we can customize the descriptors at both the levels right so i hope that is helpful last one thing which i want to tell you guys is that it's not only restricted to the wildcards question mark star mark or variable you guys can also use the arguments okay so if you see here into my uipath studio let's say i just created one argument and i'll assuming that this is coming from a different flow okay so i call it as a different flow value okay so usually in ui path automation we have values which are coming from different workflow we pass the data from arguments in out right so let's say this is one of the in argument now in this automation i want to pass this argument and i want to use that argument inside the selector to click on a specific place right so it's exactly the same concept so let's say i want to point it on the here i'll point it to this one which is the file button right and once this is generated so let's say in the fuzzy selector this is the value we want to edit right it can be any value it can be the file name it can be the path it can be any number in the url right so the concept is exactly the same we just right click on the value then you would have use variable click on that and in the drop down here you would also get the option of the argument okay and then you can say confirm now 
it says that value one of the font targets do you want to replace all the instances i say yes right that's how intuitive modern design is it says that hey mukesh you try to update it on the fuzzy selector but we notice that your strict selector is also having the same value do you want to update it i say yes and that way the both the values are automatic in a single instance which was not there in the classic design how cool is that right so which means that the i can use the wildcards i can use the variables and also i can use the arguments to fine tune the descriptors in my ui path model design okay so i hope this was helpful if you have any more questions any more doubts feel free to write me in the comments or you can also drop me an email as well see you in the next video where we are going to see more about the editing of the descriptors and now with something on the browser okay so that is all for this video I would like to wrap this video here. I hope this was insightful. If you have any more questions, any more doubts, feel free to write me in the comments or you can also drop me an email as well. I would appreciate your feedback on the video and tell me in the comments what would be the next topic or next video you want to see. So with that, I would wrap this video here. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please do subscribe to the channel and Happy automation.